All right, today we have a TTR 125 with a worn out chain and a worn out sprocket. We have our parts and tools over there. We'll get to that in a minute. So it's been a while since you guys have seen this bike. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I was riding it a lot. Uh, and as you can see, this chain is, well, it's properly worn out. Uh, even the back has slop here. It, you shouldn't really be able to do that. Um, and, it's, and it's just majorly dirty. So uh, what we got, I also added uh, some bar risers. These are great, um, great addition to this bike. Really make it more usable for a tall person, but uh, yeah, so great motorcycle overall. So, we'll get to the parts here. We've got brand new parts. Some Sunstar sprockets, a big drive sprocket. Uh, going with stock ratios here. Uh, I'm not gonna change the gearing in any way. Uh, Sunstar chain. So what we're gonna need, 17 millimeter wrench. This is gonna, uh, to loosen the axle. You also have a 17 millimeter socket wrench. That's also to uh, in the loosening of the axle. And we will also need a 12 millimeter deep well socket uh, to remove this brake adjuster because we will need to remove the uh, we'll need to remove the wheel from the bike so that we can actually take the axle out. Uh, we we'll also need another additional wrench uh, to get the chain and sprocket uh, off of the rear wheel. So we'll need that as well. Uh, I did purchase a Motion Pro chain breaker and riveting tool. Um, this will be, I won't actually need it for riveting, but I will need it to uh, reduce the link. This has a couple extra links on this chain, so I'll need to cut this down a bit using this breaker rather than using a die grinder and making a, a complete mess out of it. I'll just use a chain breaker and make it clean. It's going to work a lot better. So, alright, but first of all, we can't work on our dirty bike, so I've got the pressure washer over there. Uh, I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up, and uh, yeah, it'll be great. Always got to bleed the air from your lines, otherwise you'll burn up your pressure washer and you'll be, well, pretty angry at yourself. Well, I'm going to use the low pressure nozzle, otherwise known as the 40 degree. Uh, make sure I don't take off any stickers or blast water into any uh, wheels or bearings, that kind of thing. I'm not too worried about the chain since I'm taking it off and, well, literally I'm just going to throw it into the yard and I uh, have to collect it later, but, you know, it'll feel good. Well, this bike is pretty dirty. Hasn't been washed in a couple months, actually. Uh, really, just the problem is whether I had to wait on parts, and that took a while to get here, so... Now they're here, I can make a video about it. Uh, help anyone out that doesn't know how to change a chance rocket on a Yamaha. <laughs> In case uh, I get it out of frame here, uh, it, just so you know, it's been a couple months since I've actually used my GoPro, made a video or anything. 
So I'm, I'm still getting back into the groove here, but uh, you know, I, the purpose of these videos is to, well, I guess suppose entertain people, but also you know to, to help anyone out who doesn't know doesn't know the basics or doesn't know you know some of the uh, more advanced things like chain and a chain sprocket. It can be intimidating, but if you break the steps down, uh, it's fairly simple. In case you're wondering, I am going to make videos about my new bike. Uh, currently it is in pieces. Uh, <laughs> I do need to take the motor apart completely and replace the crankshaft. It's uh, it, It'll run, but it has a lot of end play in the, in the connecting rod. So uh, I do need to get that replaced and I have the parts. Luckily I was able to find an OEM, an OEM kit, uh, but I will be making videos about that. It may be a little bit of time before I start making videos. Uh, just getting everything organized and being able to do it in a timely and organized manner, especially with videos and stuff, it, that can make it take a lot more time. But I want to uh, help anyone out because I've <laughs> in the last few months of owning this bike, I've realized that uh, there's not a lot of uh, support or, or any kind of documentation really showing how to repair an XR500 uh, or any showing you know showing any of the internal uh, workings of the motor in that kind of bike uh, so you know if, if anyone has an XR500 and needs some help or an explanation of what it actually uh, takes to repair the motor or repair you know a certain part of it uh, I'm hoping to be able to uh, supply that where you know, it really hasn't been done before. So, uh, I'm still making videos about this bike. Uh, hope you enjoy the video of replacing this chain sprocket. Uh, and there will be more videos about the, uh, there will be, well, an introductory video of the Honda uh, coming soon. But it may be a little couple weeks or something, but it's coming. Yeah, when you're riding through the tall grass, it always likes to get caught up in the linkage here, and ugh, it's gross. You know, I or the thing is, I really dislike the uh, spring mud season. It's just it it just it gets so annoying and gross that you end up getting tired of washing a bike so much, and you just don't ride or you don't wash your bike. It's one of those two. And uh, well, to be honest, I just, <laughs> I just haven't had time to wash my bike or let alone even ride. So. Uh, now that school's out, I can uh, I can focus on the things I really want to be doing, like making my bike look good and run good too. So uh, let's get this finished up, and we will dry it off, and then we can start working on this chain and uh, replacing the sprockets. Alright, well the bike's all washed up now, we're going to dry it off, uh, get out my leaf blower, we'll blow a little water off this, and once that's dry, we will put on the chain and the new sprocket. Alright, now i got the leaf blower out, 
I was borrowing a 150 BT, great blower. In case you don't know how to start a backpack blower, well, it is kind of self-explanatory for someone who's done it before, but in case you haven't, you have your throttle, your cruise control, your kill switch, which is not auto-resetting, so if you push it up, you have to push it back down to start it again. We'll set the throttle about an eighth of an inch on. Make sure you set your choke to down, to closed position. And the primer bulb on the bottom, you're going to pump it until there's no more bubbles coming out of here. Alright, about four or five poles, or uh, four or five primes usually gets all the air out, and usually one or two poles actually starts this. I think the bike is sufficiently dried off now. I think we can work on it without getting our hands nasty and wet and covered with mud and dirt. So All right. Let's take the bike back over to where the tools and our parts are. All right. So now to be able to remove the rear tire, we're also going to need to set the bike up on something like a stand or a bucket, which is what I use, uh, you know, just a five gallon bucket, and that'll be sufficient enough to get the back tire off the ground, allowing us to remove the back tire safely without the bike falling over. All right, so got a bucket. Let's put the bike up on the bucket. Gotta make sure it's centered, otherwise it won't, uh, won't sit properly and it'll fall off pretty easy. Alright, so now it's up on the bucket. As you can see, the wheel is free to turn. And the front tire actually happens to be off the ground too, so if we ever need to service the front tire at the same time, we could do that. But today, we're just servicing the rear chain, we're going to remove the wheel, uh, we're going to remove the front sprocket, and we're also going to show how to remove the rear sprocket. And uh, in case you're wondering, this will be my first time doing this on any kind of motorcycle, so bear with me for a minute. Look at that. Look at this. That's just... That's just incredible. Look how much gap is in there. Seriously. What the heck? This chain is worn out. Okay, so... What we have is a 17 millimeter. A wrench, box wrench with a open end. Uh, we have our 17 millimeter ratchet. I'm gonna use these to take off the axle, but you're thinking, well, hang on. We got this. I got our brake lever uh, rod to remove, otherwise we won't be able to take the, uh, the wheel off. So we got to remove that, and that can be done with 12 millimeter deep well socket. Uh, some bikes do have a wing nut on the back, you know, and for some reason Yamaha decided not to use a wing nut on this uh, So we have to use a socket wrench to adjust this All right, so we got the nut taken off so this is now free to do as it pleases uh, I can just let that hang. Well, maybe not completely, because you have a washer that goes on first, and then you have your spring. And then also right here, we have a, uh, well, this little spacer. Well, it's not a spacer, it's a collet, essentially. 
that holds that and allows this to pivot and actuate the brake. So we'll put that there, and we got the nut, adjuster nut. We'll put that there as well. All right, let's take off the chain. So I need pliers to undo the clip. Right here is our clip hidden in filth and gunk. Gross. We'll just pop that off. And these pliers do work extremely well because they have this curve and then a flat side where you can get in there and push that link off. And then we'll just kind of pry that. And we won't need these parts. Uh, the new chain includes everything we need, including the clip. <laughs> I found that out the hard way. Uh, I bought an extra link. I didn't realize that chains come with a master link and clip. So that is good to know if you're buying one of these, that it does typically include a new master link. I was not planning to reuse the old master link, but I knew that I needed one for the new chain. So pull this nasty thing off. I don't even really want to touch it, and actually, I should be wearing those gloves over there, but, you know, whatever. That goes over there in the yard. For now. So, I got some, some filth on me, but it's alright. It wipes off, and that's what the, the what jeans are for, it just blends in, look at that. Alright, so, we got our wheel. Rotates pretty good. This is, uh... Well, I guess you could say good bearings. There's uh, they, they have a little roll forever and there's no play whatsoever. So that is good. I was planning to take apart this linkage and re-grease it. Um, it's, it why, why do they not include a grease fitting? There needs to be a grease fitting on these. Whereas on, you know, it's just standard for equipment to have grease fittings. But I suppose it's a weight savings thing or maybe they're just lazy, cheap. But, uh, besides that, so, let's get this axle nut off. This, well, this is the bolt end, but we'll get the nut off on the other side there. We got our 17mm socket, quarter inch drive ratchet. Make sure we're in loosening mode, you know. Always gotta double check, because you, you get on there and you're thinking you're loosening it and you're just fighting with yourself and you're tightening it, so that's never good. Let's be smart about this. Let's use leverage in our favor. And I did definitely put that on pretty tight. Uh, that was not going to go anywhere. And that is what you want, you know, you don't want your axle moving around. Moving around on you when you're riding. Um, now this is a Niwok nut, uh, so it, it's, it doesn't come off very easily on its own. But it's always good to make sure you're torquing all your bolts and fasteners to that proper uh, rate of torque. Uh, otherwise you run the risk of things not being clamped well enough, or in turn not uh, having the proper gap between certain parts causing, well, other problems related to over torque and those kinds of things. Alright, so I'm going to slide this axle out. I'm going to make sure that uh, we hopefully don't lose too many parts doing this. And I just realized the back of the bike is going to get lighter, so uh, let's just make sure this is centered properly. It it did shift a bit, so all right. I think we're all right to pull this out now. There's our axle bolt. So all right, pull this back. We have a spacer here. The spacer actually goes inside the rear bearing. Lovely. So here's our dust seal. Uh. Yeah, looks alright. Let's check that bearing. 
in a minute to make sure it's not like you know having a pissy. All right, here is our rear brake. We got this little bushing spacer, whatever you want to call it. If there's a term for it, it's a bushing, but whatever. Or a spacer. This is a spacer, not a bushing, because the axle actually doesn't it doesn't pivot on this. This is locked in here, so the bearing is inside. So this is our rear brake caliper. This is a drum brake. Eh. It's actually kind of surprising. I've, I've, I've seen inside of a brake caliper like this. It's not a caliper. Well, this is a drum brake, but I've seen inside of a drum brake before on a motorcycle like this. Uh, just never my own. So, I got some uh, nasty brake dust in there. We do have a bearing here. It's, it's actually very smooth and very tight, so there's nothing, nothing wrong with that bearing. We're gonna just try to dump some of this dirt out. Uh, it worked somewhat well, somewhat not. But that's not what we're here for. Alright, so. We have our sprocket. The wheels are moved from the bike. Now, there are these little stay flaps here. And we're going to have to pry those down. Um, I think I'm going to have to get a flathead screwdriver to do this. And we'll be right back. Alright, so I ended up grabbing a uh, chainsaw tool. A little scrunch here. It's got a little flathead adjuster on the back. Um, my trusty hammer, you know. Just in case we need reinforcement. Uh, let's see what we can do here without hurting ourselves. Uh, let's see if we can attack it from this side. Just kind of wedge that in. Oh, that's working pretty, pretty good actually. Alright. And you don't need to bend these flush either. You just need to get them out of the way so that the nut can spin. As you can see, you know, I'm already getting kind of dirty here. So I'll try to rem uh, <laughs> I'll try to maintain my dignity and not get too dirty. But then again, who's to say that because you're dirty, that you don't have a dignity, you know? Someone's probably gonna say, hey, why aren't you using a cold chisel? Well, I don't got a cold chisel, so that's all right. All right, let's get our socket wrench here. These are gonna be our 17 millimeter socket. Uh, well, yeah, 17 millimeter bolts. crank this loose here. That actually wasn't on there too good. They're not too loose, but they're not super tight either, so I'll keep a mental note of that. That way when I go to put these on, I won't crank on them too bad. Uh, so we got our nuts here, sprocket nuts. And we also have these little uh, metal pieces, the metal pieces, they, uh, you know, like, they just attach to the tab there and you're able to lock these nuts from coming off, since these are not nylock nuts. Alright, here's the moment of truth, we're gonna see if this is <laughs> decided to weld itself to, uh, the wheel. Nope, not a chance. So, old sprocket. 54 tooth and we're replacing that with another 54 tooth I'm gonna grab some paper towels gonna wipe this seal out and uh, maybe put some lube in there I don't know we're just gonna wipe it out uh, and we'll be right back all right got some paper towels here this one's a little tattered up so we'll use that first I'm gonna wipe facing outward on this so you don't drive stuff in This brake drum does actually look pretty good. Nothing, nothing's actually really wrong. There's actually very little wear in here. As I can feel this, there's no lip. There is a texture change, but no lip. There's 
extremely low wear in there, so. Alright, so. Now we will need to take off this front sprocket. And for this we'll need two, we're going to have to take off these two 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, so I'll just go grab that. We're just going to crack these loose, get this handlebar out of the way. And yes, I have smacked my head into that a couple times doing this. That's part of the reason why I'm wearing a helmet. Make sure I don't hit my head on anything. Because we all know that when you hit your head, you, you mess up your brain, so that's never a good thing. All right, little bolt, I'm just gonna put that there. Uh, I probably won't lose that in this giant concrete pad here. Oh, and look at this. Little sprocket, hello. All right, so we're gonna need two we're gonna need to. Who am I saying? We don't need to. We already have to. We just need to remove these two here. Um, so I'm gonna grab an Allen wrench. It'll fit this, uh, and then I'll be right back. All right. Got our Allen wrenches here. Uh, I think this is gonna be a small one. What is this gonna be? Five thirty seconds. Oh yeah. Always make sure you put the bike in gear. It'll help so the sprocket doesn't spin around when you're trying to loosen it. You know, that never works very well. So that just he has to spin about a quarter of a turn here just to be able to uh, come off, and then I'll just pull the whole sprocket off, and that'll make it a little easier. Okay. So, here's the old sprocket. You can sit over there. You're in timeout. Uh, yeah, timeout indefinitely, that is. Alright, so we got our paper towels. Paper towels are wonderful, you know. You can use them for so many things, and when you're done, you just throw them away. Like, no, and like it never even happened, you know. So, it's pretty greasy. I could use a solvent on this, but, you know, I don't feel like breathing in fumes. And, uh, that's, again, you know, it's just terrible. Terrible, nasty stuff. And if you just take the time to, do, you know, wipe off the schmoo by your hands, it's just, it's just fine. Now, let's unbox our sprocket. Nice new sprocket here. Oh yeah, look at this, beautiful. All right, so you got a new sprocket, front drive sprocket. Let's just quickly compare it to the old one. You can see the wear on this. Look at these teeth. All right, is that in a frame? All right, as you can see, there's a significant like groove ground into the base of those teeth on this sprocket right here. But this one, as you can see, perfect, brand new, never been used. Perfect form in every tooth, so. It goes over there. And for nothing other than just good lucks, we'll put the uh, logo facing outward. That looks about right. So, put the bike back in neutral so this can move. And now let's go to the... All right, so we got our new sprocket here. All right, check this thing out. Beautiful. Awesome, look at that. Wow. That's a nice little sprocket there. All right, so let's put this on the bike. Line up the bolts. Now, what we will do, put these little keepers on there. Actually, you know what? 
let's wipe these off so we don't, you know, put a dirty part back on a clean bike. That way we can really admire the gold chain. Make sure we're in the tightening mode here. And I snug it. I'm gonna go one grunt because that's how science actually works. Alright, so we torque these to uh, one grunt. Uh, so so here we got these lined. This one's gonna line up. This one we will go hair tighter. That way that lines up there. Uh, same with this one. Now uh, it's not round off the nut here. Actually, we really want to do this. I have to flatten that washer out a bit. That's some dirt in there. Jeez. That doesn't look like I'm working outside or something. Probably is a tool that'll make this a lot easier, but I actually don't have that tool. Oh man, seriously, what does it take? All right, so now we got all of our little flanges bent up so that the nuts will not back themselves off. And now it is time, just double check, make sure we have no dirt down in this seal here. I'm gonna wipe the seal out once more. Got a little bit of dirt out of there. So, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this wheel back on the motorcycle. Same way that we took it off, just in reverse. Like that, let me just check the operation of this. So when you apply the brake, it pushes those pads outward, causing friction and stopping your motorcycle, hopefully. I got another spacer. You don't want to forget these. Because if you do, well, you'll have issues. Actually, you know what? I made a blunder. I'm going to have to pull this out. Put this spacer back in. Now we can put the wheel back in. Alright. Put our axle back in.
back adjusters in there. So, what you're gonna do now, push that wheel all the way up forward. It's gonna, I'm just gonna snug this down so it doesn't really go anywhere on its own. And this is where things get a little complicated. We're gonna have to cut this chain to size. Well, I suppose we're not really cutting it, we are splitting the chain. Alright, so we got our brand new chain, we've got our brand new front and our brand new rear sprocket installed. Now it's time to open up our chain. Now this comes with 134 links. Uh, we only really need about 110 links. So I guess we'll find out whenever we get this open and we'll lay it we'll lay it on. What we'll try to do is make a full loop around. We'll try to make a full loop around and then we'll see how much it overlaps and whatever overlaps we will break that section off and then we will be left with a perfectly fit brand new chain. I'm gonna grab some gloves. We have our gloves here. All right, so we'll find the master link. Here's our new master link. Uh, the link, the little end piece, and the clip. So that's what we'll need. That's very important. This chain seems to be covered in some kind of a grease uh, from the factory, but I do have, just in case, I have my uh, chain lube there and penetrating oil. Alright, so, this chain, wow, well, this is tight, there's basically no slop on this. There's probably a good way to do this, but I'm going to do it the way that I know to do it, uh, and the way that's always worked for me. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay the chain. Put that on the ground so that uh, I'm going to lay this down there. We don't get a bunch of dirt on this brand new chain. Alright, so we're going to take the chain and run it up up to the front here and we're gonna run this around I'm just gonna lightly spin the sprocket by hand and then we'll just take that out and we'll feed this through probably hard to see right now but once I get it through there it's easier okay so We'll put this on the bottom and it'll just pull itself around and that way it makes it very easy to see how much we need to cut off. And what we'll do, we'll just shorten that. And we'll put this in gear. That way it'll keep this where it needs to be. And that, and, well that is kind of loose. Wow. Um, okay. Let's make sure these adjusters are set on the lowest setting. This way we can make sure we have plenty of travel left on our adjusters. Alright, we're back. My camera decided to die on me, so I just had to give it a time to charge. Uh, so, we're going to pick up where we left off. Where we left off, we got our chain looped loosely around this chain and sprocket here. So, we got this looped around. Uh, I lined this up, and it looks like we're going to have to break, gonna have to break this chain right here. 
uh, and I got my chain tool here. I uh, cleaned up my workspace as well. So, I got this nice little chain tool here. Uh, I've got it set up so we can just tighten this on there and break this chain right now and we'll have enough time to uh, show tensioning and we will also we'll just put the bike back together and we'll be good to go. Alright, let's get this done. So you just want to make sure it's it's fitted and centered snugly over one of the rivets that you intend to uh, press out. It should be on the chain, not going to go anywhere right now. So now we'll take our little bar here. We're going to tighten this. Against, it's feeling snug, all right? It's snugging up here. getting there. It's loosening up a bit. Oh yeah, I think we're there. Yes, we are. Alright. So, here's the pin. We just pressed this out. Boom. Chain is now broken. Broken in a good way, that is. Not to be confused with broken in a bad way. We have a freshly broken chain. This chain is now ready to be snapped together with our brand new master link. So, getting a new chain on there. Nothing fits perfect the first time. Alright, so we got our master link. We're just going to cut this out of this packaging. It is pre waxed, so that's all nice. Even though I don't use chain wax, I prefer a uh, chain lubricant over a wax, but this chain wax will provide a good initial uh, barrier for any dirt and will provide good lubrication to start with. Alright, so got our new master link here. And there's the part we just broke out. Boom, there we go. Alright, so. Um, this, we'll just take a bit of this wax on here and put it on this. That way it's, you know, not dry or anything. Uh, some of these do come with lube, mine didn't, so that's alright. Make do with it. Boom, alright, so now we grab our outside link here. You can put it in uh, whichever way you want. I'm going to put it with the label outside. That just fits on like that. So, now, with the clip. Always make sure you put the clip with the open side facing behind you. So that means when you're driving forward, the closed part of the clip is going to be facing in the direction you are going. We're just going to put that on there like that. And where? Here they are. They're hiding all the way over here. Got our pliers. And then he's just gonna use to snap this clip on. Like that. Check that out. Like in neutral. And that thing is basically ready to go. Uh, but before we take this thing anywhere, we'll have to hook up our brake and we'll also have to tension our chain because this is just a little excessive. It's kind of what I was trying to avoid by getting a new chain, so we'll just bump this out. Let's see, what are we going to run this at? Uh, that's actually too tight, so move the little cog back uh, let's see so right about here 
to there. That's about two inches of chain slack. Which is good. That's what we want. And if we actually snug this back against that locating pin, we get a little bit more. And that's actually going to be pretty, pretty perfect. Right there. And we'll set this one at two. If we want any tighter, um, when we set the bike down, it'll make the chain too tight, and then once you compress the suspension, it actually tightens up even more. So. Any more than that, and we would actually have problems. Grab our wrench here. You gotta work a little quickly, uh, just so we don't run out of battery this time, you know, like we did before. Snug that. Boom, there we go. Alright, so that's where it wants to be. It's right there. Actually, you know what? I almost forgot a step. Take our little washer. Take a washer. Our spring. And put those on first. Now we can put that on. adjuster nut on grab our socket all right so I just got the rear brake reattached the chain is now on I'm working we got cut to size got the new link put on it's pre-lubed actually with uh, its own chain wax here, so that's actually really good to go. Um, Alright, so this is what we cut off, and now, now we're going to put our guard back on, because safety. We'll grab our 10 millimeter socket, grab our ratchet, make sure we're in tightening mode gonna snug these because they go into aluminum and we don't need to strip out the bolts already. Oh, that's good. That's plenty. Alright, so just give me a minute and I'll put away the tools and we'll be Well, that concludes our installation of a new chain and a new set of sprockets. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful, please subscribe. And stay tuned for some of my upcoming videos that will include this bike and the Honda.
Oh, that's that. Shane is well tensioned. Bike's running good. I purchased a jet kit for this bike, which will also be coming in pretty soon. And I also, as well, for an extra added safety item, I bought a BBR chain guide. So I'll put that on and I'll show everyone how to do that. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'm sorry for not posting any videos in the last few months. Just life's been so busy. But I will try to be on schedule now uh, and make regular content. Well, enjoy, subscribe.